What happens after diagnosis? And told to go on your way. Funding scheme and trial therapy probably won't tell you about the IEP. It was important to know that. Sleigh bells ringing, diamonds bling, carol singing, famous season. Hey guys, welcome to another day of Vlogmas. We are going to be covering life after diagnosis. What happens after diagnosis? What is next? You're not often told what's next. <laughs> I'm going to start off this video by saying that this is just my experience. I am no expert. I am not a professional. I am not anything. I am an autism parent myself. I have an almost four year old who is level three autistic. We share our lives on this channel and I try to keep it so real. And in saying that, I'm going to give you some advice that I have learned from our experience on what happens after diagnosis and what you may think about doing after diagnosis. This is not to say that you have to follow these steps. This is just what has helped us to come to a place right now where things are fluid, things are just going well. And I just wanted to give that type of advice because when you're handed that diagnosis, when you just learn that your child is on the autism spectrum, you're handed a report that has recommendations on it and told to go on your way most of the time. That's the experiences I've heard about and I have experienced myself. If you didn't get that experience, amazing. I'm so, so glad. But if you were like me and you were handed a diagnosis and said, off you go. We'll see you in two years time for a re-evaluation. Then you need to be watching this video. The Aussie Autism family is a community. So I did ask my community on Instagram to give their input in this topic because I like to share information and the more views and opinions I have, the more information that I can provide for you guys. In saying that, these are the things that I would suggest that you do after receiving an autism diagnosis. First thing I want to say, just a little bit of advice, take it one step at a time. Take it one day at a time. Take a deep breath in between each step. It can get quite overwhelming and intimidating the amount of things that you have to do after a diagnosis. It almost feels like you've got this really, really long to-do list and you're trying to race through it as fast as you can. So just take a breath. It's not a race. Take each step as it comes. These are the steps. The first step I would recommend is seeking funding. Now we here in Australia have the National Disability Insurance Scheme, which is the disability scheme that provides funding for people with a disability. That is what I have experience on. If you are in America and there's a different insurance scheme, I would not know anything about that. <laughs> but that is the first step that I would recommend someone to look into, research into, call someone, call the NDIS to ask what's the process. I'm going to have a little bit more information on this at the end of the video. Uh, I just didn't want to concentrate on it too much if you're watching from a different country. So yeah, seek the funding scheme because sometimes those types of things take a little while. It's a government process. Um, see if there's any payments or things that you're entitled to. All of these things will help your child and it'll help you to access services and supports and in more, most importantly, early intervention for your child. So definitely get on that ASAP after you take that deep breath. The next thing that I would advise someone to do is to read the report again. More importantly, read the recommendations that are at the end of the diagnostic report. These recommendations, more often than not, are really helpful. The top recommendation will probably be access the insurance scheme or the funding scheme. And for Australia, that would be the NDIS. Other recommendations that they will put on the report, in my experience, I don't know about anyone else's report, but they just put things like for Jacob to access speech therapy because he had a speech delay, for Jacob to access occupational therapy because he had sensory difficulties, for Jacob to access the early intervention program for school, uh, and also to access psychology if he needed it. This is a good starting point, but I want you guys to know that it's not the be all end all. I have a feeling, don't quote me on this, but those types of recommendations are like a one size fits all kind of recommendation. 
So for a three-year-old who has just gotten a diagnosis, they'll put the same kind of recommendations for speech, OT, all of those things. Don't quote me on that and don't come at me on the, in the comments for that, but I kind of think that's true. Those aren't the only therapies available and we'll cover that in the next step. We may as well go on to the next step, which would be to choose and trial therapies and therapeutic supports. There are many, many therapies there are many, many support services. It's not one size fits all. You need to trial a few therapies before you know what's best for your child. I can sit here and say that ABA therapy has been amazing for Jacob. It has been the perfect fit for him, but it may not be the perfect fit for your child. And that's okay. You just need to research and ask around, see what therapy is going to best fit your child. See what early intervention they need. If they need speech therapy because they have a speech delay, definitely access speech therapy. I can't even list the amount of therapies that there are available, but the main ones would be speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, social or behavior therapy, music or art therapy or equine therapy. There are so many therapies. They all suit different individuals. We are all different. I decided that I would have an open mind to all therapies and try most of them. We went into ABA therapy as a trial. Jacob also does speech therapy. We trialed ABA therapy and it was going well. And I was sitting in there on his therapy sessions and seeing progress already. So we just continued that. And a year and a half later, he has made so much progress from that therapy, but it may not suit your child. So definitely trial therapies, do a therapy. And if it's not working out, trial another one. The next step that I would advise you to take is to seek support. So this is for you as a parent of someone who has autism. There are support groups out there. There are support services out there for you. Please take them up. Your referring diagnostic doctor or whoever they are <laughs> probably won't tell you about these. They won't probably spend the time to write a list of them that are in your area. You need to seek these out. You need to do a Google search. You need to ask your GP. You need to ask your local council, all of those things. You'll find support groups. You might find some carers support. You might find some counseling support, all of the things. Sorry, I just had to turn the air on because my camera overheated. So that's the noise you can hear. Find your support groups. Definitely a big one. My biggest one was finding fellow autism parents online. Uh, I felt like I couldn't get out of the house very much. It was just too hard. So online support groups are amazing as well. Another important step that you should take is if your child is in school, tell the school because they can create an IEP, which is an individualized program for your child whilst they're in school and what support that they will need when they're at school. They may need additional support at school and it is important that you know that you're entitled to it they may have information as well to give you so definitely tell the school on that note um, an important step that you have to make as an autism parent is the choice to share your child's diagnosis with family and friends and all of that it is completely up to you whether you choose to share whether your child has autism or not but I do think that it's important to let you know that Educating people on why your child is behaving a particular way or why your child is doing this. It's great for people to know that your child has autism. Any education that you can provide that person may help them in their lives as well. So it may not be just for your child, but anyone that you encounter in society. It is again your decision. You do not have to share that information. I just think that it will help your child for people around them to support them and to be advocates for them whilst they're in the community and to understand their processing because it is a different processing system. Another important step that I had to take with Jacob, and this may not be relevant to your child, but it is relevant to a lot of autistic children, is understanding their sensory needs and creating a sensory diet for them. If you don't understand what sensory processing disorder is, click this video right here and I tell you all about sensory processing disorder and how it affects Jacob. Autistic children more often than not have sensory needs 
and they're either a sensory seeker or a voider. So sometimes there's certain sensory things that they are seeking and they want and they are, you know, on the mission to get or they are wanting to avoid and sometimes you'll see people covering their ears because they don't like loud noises that is an avoiding behavior more information in that video if you want to see that but i definitely recommend that as a step you see an occupational therapist who is good with sensory processing they will be able to do a sensory evaluation of your child and let you know a little bit more about them and how to help them in their everyday life so for example we were told that Jacob is a sensory seeker orally so he loves his dummy and he loves his bottle and he constantly wants to fill his mouth when he eats like he fills it right up it was important to know that because sometimes he would put things in his mouth if we took his dummy and his bottle away from him because that's what we were told to do don't listen to that important for us to know that so that we can provide him that oral sensory input in a different way if we didn't want him to have the dummy. He needs that sensory input so we needed to figure out a way to give that to him in his everyday life so that he fulfilled that sensory need. Again more information in that video up there but uh, definitely concentrate on a sensory diet. The last thing I want to say is that you are your child's biggest advocate. However, you need to look after yourself too. I did mention before support groups and counseling and such, but really, really, really important step for you to take is to either, if you don't know anything about autism, is to go to an autism webinar or a seminar. There are so many courses and things you can do to help yourself to become the best parent you can be for your child. Um, a lot of people may not know about autism and may need to educate themselves on it and I think it's an important step to take to look after yourself and make sure you are well equipped to parent your child. Now I know there's so so many more things that you can do and the steps you can take after diagnosis. These are just the ones that really stick out to me and our experience. So. I really hope this has helped you in some way. Um, if you are an autism parent, comment down below any steps that you think are important after the diagnosis. I'd love for you to share those below so everyone else can see them and take those steps as well. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in our next video.